On the next example, um, ladies and gentlemen, in this case, what we simply have is x to the 3 halves uh, raised, um, x to the 3 halves equals 8. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this example, please take up here. Um, in this example, when we're looking at this, this is just like last time we used a radical, um, a radical, right? We had the square root. Well, if you guys remember, we can rewrite radicals as our rational root, all right? Um, however, what I'd like you guys to think about this, it basically, if we're solving, what we basically want to do is get x to the first power, right? We want to solve where x is by itself, or when x is to the first power. So basically, what I want to do is right now I have x to the 3 halves. And if you guys remember, when we had a variable or a base raised to a power, raised it to another power, what did we do with a, to a and b? We multiplied them. Whenever you have an exponent raised to a power, you multiply the powers. So what I want to do is I want to raise my x to the 3 halves to a power that's going to make that 1. So what number multiplied by 3 halves is going to make that 1? 2 over 3, which is called the reciprocal. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise both sides to the 2 thirds power. Okay. See, what happens is, you guys can see, the 3 halves, 2 thirds, those multiply to give you x to the first power. Now, I simply just have 8 to the 2 thirds. Okay. Now, there's a couple different ways we can do this. Um, the first way is you guys can rewrite this as a radical expression, which would be the cube root of 8 squared. All right. Now, sometimes you guys are going to have some difficult numbers, but if you have a calculator, um, you can easily go ahead and compute these. 8 squared is 64. Cube root of 64, what number multiplied by itself three times gives you 64? Anybody know? 4. 8 times 8 is 64. So square root, or 8 squared, or square root of 64 is 8, but the cube root is actually 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is um, 64. Uh, the other way to do this, which I'm going to go over because sometimes this is easier, the other way to do this is, again, ladies and gentlemen, if I want to get rid of this 3, the basically the other way to do this is to get this so it doesn't kind of like that again. If you guys notice, the reason why this works again, because when you have the numerator and the denominator are the same, they divide to 1, right? Those divide to 1. That's why we get x to the first power. So if I have a fraction, I want to be able to write, can I rewrite 8? to a power of 3? Or can I rewrite 8 um, as, a num as an exponent to the power of 3? So what I'm trying to say is, if I wrote x to the power of 3, raise it to the 2 thirds, what you guys would notice is the 3's would divide out, and I'd just be left with x squared. Okay. So if I can rewrite 8 as an exponent to the third power. So let's think about it. Could I do 1 cubed? Is 1 cubed equal to 8? No. What about 2 cubed? Yeah. 2 times 2 times 2, right, is 8. So what I'm showing you is just another way to do this. Instead of doing num like this and using your calculator, you could also write this as 2 cubed times the 2 third power. Because again, what happens when you multiply an exponent, raise it to a power? You multiply them, right? So that's 2 to the third times 2 thirds. Those cancel out. You're left with 2 squared, which equals 4. And you get the exact same answer. All right. We're going to do a problem like that. We're going to do a problem later where it's going to be a little bit easier to do it that method.